something else in there. And so in this activity, you get the students to describe what they see, and it's about language. It's about getting the right type of language going. So I'm doing this in English, but whether it works in any other language that would be interesting to see. So the language here is I see. I see mobile phones. I see a smartphone. I see some apps. I see a woman. I see a headdress. I see a woman not smiling. I see a woman not crying and so forth. So starting that off at that kind of foundry level. The next stage is the thinking stage. So getting the students to think, okay, you can see something. Okay, what do you think it means? And in this case, I'd ask the students the question, what do you think the connection is between the smartphone and the woman in the picture? And again, there's no right answer. It's getting them to explore. So you can see that I'm not giving away information. I'm getting them to use their level of understanding, their level of understanding of the world they live in, getting to use the knowledge that they have, getting them to use the language that they have to discuss and explore these two images. And so in a way, we're building up the layers of tentative interpretation rather than just naming things. So you can see building up those critical skills. We're going from just describing now we're starting to explore things at a little bit deeper. And so what is the connection between the two? Perhaps the students don't know. Perhaps the woman makes mobile phones. Perhaps um, the woman sells mobile phones. We can go on. The third, um, the third part of the routine is wonder. And so this is a, where the students begin to ask questions, broader questions to go a little bit deeper. And again, it's to do with language. I wonder if, I wonder if these pictures are connected because the woman sells mobile phones. I wonder if these pictures are connected because the mobile phones are made in the country where this woman lives. I wonder if these mobile phones have something to do with this woman's well-being or lifestyle. And so you can see the language has gone from I see, I see a woman, through to becoming a little bit more complex, to becoming a little bit more deeper in understanding what they're seeing. It's the process, the important part here is the, the process of observation. What do they see? And when they see it, what are they actually seeing? Not just the objects, but what are they looking at? What meaning are they drawing from these images? So as I said, these are kind of simple images, but you could also start with more complex images where there are many things happening in the picture and it and need to um, be constructed. As a teaching strategy, this process could be done in one class or it could be done over a number of classes. So it depends on the purpose that you're using this for. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. And it's the same woman, the same picture, um, a little bit more context. And so again, we could do the same thing. What do you see? I see a woman in a valley. I see a woman in the country. I see a woman um, still not looking very happy. And now I bring this picture back in and we can say, I see the, the phones, that hasn't changed. Okay, now think. What do you think? I think that the phones have something to do with a woman. Um, I think the phones have something to do with the woman's lifestyle. And so then you begin to explore it in a little bit more depth. And then again, wonder. I wonder what this is all about. And it'd be interesting to see what students um, actually make from this was taken from a story from one of our local news um, uh, news uh, producers, and it's about the woman um, is in in the Congo in Africa, and she's actually standing in a mine, and she mines um, for a mineral that's used in smartphones, and then we can go on and present this whole story to the students. Um, that she makes, for example, $21 a week um, and it works seven days a week, um, all for this mineral that goes into the smartphones. Now, this is not to guilt the students, but it's to show the connection. What connection 
through your mobile phones have with people on the other side of the world. So not only critical thinking skills, but also developing some kind of social responsibility into the learning process. And so what are we trying to do here? We're getting the students to think about um, the decisions they make. So those skills aren't just for an activity like this, but they then can be transferred into any other actions or behaviours they do in both learning and in their lives. Getting them to question decisions they make and the impact that those decisions have on the world we live in. We also get them to question what information they're using to share their ideas, to share their thoughts. And so this is where they begin to question, oh, I saw it on YouTube. Well, is YouTube a good source of information? We know how social media can be manipulated. And then what are the implications of their actions? So you can see from that one little picture, we can then build a whole lesson to look at um, a number of themes and a number of um, topic areas, depending on uh, whatever subject area is. It could be to do with um, could do with environmental studies, it could do, do with um, human geography, it could do with engineering. And, uh, and then they explore a solution. What can they do about it? So at the heart of this process is questioning, making sure that the students are asking the right questions. And I guess that's where our role as educator comes in, in order for us to expect and to develop um, critical thinking skills in our students we need to be critical thinkers ourselves. We can't expect our students to be critical thinkers if we're not critical thinkers ourselves. So as educators, we, I guess we need to ask questions of ourselves and maybe challenge some of our own beliefs and values in order to make that um, development in our teaching approaches and, uh, our, um, and the learning experiences for our students. So this approach is valid across all disciplines we can um, you can use this in any type of discipline and actually in any level of education not just higher education but it can also be used at the elementary and the secondary level so um, so a lot of uses there so we need critical thinking it's a skill that's needed now for the um, the 4.0 era we need it today we actually need it more than ever um, because we can see what's happening around the world with current events. So instead of um, the need to stockpile toilet paper, I think we need to be stockpiling um, critical thinking skills. These images are from supermarkets here in Australia and the one on the left, on my left, um, the shelves there, the empty shelves, was actually taken this morning at a large supermarket in Wollongong. So, um, so the, the practice of critical thinking skills um, seems to evaporate it uh, as quickly as the toilet paper on the shelves in the supermarket. And that brings to an end I, uh, my little presentation on teaching strategies and crit critical thinking skills. I hope you found something of value in um, presented. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. Could you please give a big hand for Mark? Well, Mark, could you... Uh, um, yeah, so we are opening a question session here. Uh oh, yeah. So I hope that you bear waiting for some questions, uh, one question only from our participants. Well, um, yeah. So we offer one participant only to address Mark a question related to improving the student's critical thinking. Yeah, Ibu. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Thank you. Fine. Nice to meet you again. And I like your batik. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I, I picked it up at a little place called Indonesia. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> thank you for the sharing. It's indeed very important to have high order thinking skills. Unfortunately, the weak points of our students in class, they are very lazy to read because at the basic things for high uh, order thinking skills. So what do you suggest us if the students are not really keen on reading? They are very 
yeah, I know you, you better you know about it, especially from the result of PISA, because PISA was tested by the Australian to Indonesian students. Thank you so much for the suggestion. All right, Mark, I would like to make sure. Um, do you get yes, the I point? Yes. Yeah, okay. And thank it's you very much for the question. And I think it's a universal problem. I have exactly the same problem here in Australia. And it's a big, it's a big issue because um, one of the subjects I teach here is in the undergraduate education program. So the program that is preparing students to become both primary or primary teachers or secondary teachers and get them in third year of their four year degree. And by the time I get them, um, they have no interest in reading just want to put in their assignments. They don't come to any lectures. Last year, out of 320 enrollments, I averaged about 50 students a lecture, which was a real issue. Not, and I'm sure that um, I'm sure that wasn't because of my personality. Um, I think that they just have other things on in their lives. Now, the implication of them coming and engaging with the subject is actually quite serious because it's not just my subject they're, they're not engaging in, but it's many of the other subjects. And um, so if they're not attending university and if they're not reading the literature, they're not reading the latest research, then they're exiting the program not as well informed as we hope they are. That's going to have implications on the quality of teaching in our classrooms. But to answer the question about what to do about the reading, um, I have a son who hates reading and it frustrates him because he keeps buying books and he just doesn't want to read. So that whole notion of um, if you're a literate parent and you have books in the home, your students will be literate, I'd like to challenge that notion. I guess a compromise might be, will be discussion. If they're not reading, then discussing is a good starting point because and this is, I guess, as educators, this is where it's important to pay attention to what we say in the classroom. What we want to do is to use kind of higher ordered language in the classroom. So although they're not reading, if they're using higher ordered language, they're getting that language, the literate language. It's a starting point. And then for the reading, um, unfortunately, I don't have any, any a magic um, magic spells you can cast over them. The only magic spell that I have is you make it an assessment item or you don't expect them to do too much. You just give them um, the required readings and perhaps build that in into the, um, the lessons. Uh, so for example, you could do the critical thinking skills uh, around uh, taking apart some of the reading. But it's a universal problem and if you ever come with a solution, um, please pass it on to me because um, I think we could all benefit from that. But it's a very good question. It's something. It's one of the challenges, and I think it's um, it comes from those challenges I mentioned before that there's too much competition, there's too many distractions, and perhaps sometimes our students are a little bit too comfortable. Um, they don't have they don't have this kind of threat that something nasty is going to happen to them if it does if they don't engage in literature. So um, not that we should be threatening them, but um, I think we're, we're teaching in a different era. And so um, I guess we still need to get them to engage with the content, how they engage with the content, that's the challenge. Whether they read it, whether they watch it on YouTube, um, is, there a, is, there, is it so bad if instead of reading the text, that they watch the same thing being explained in YouTube, a TEDx talk, um, saying, talking about the same thing. Is that so bad? Is it content that we want them to get? Or is it just developing your reading skills? And so these are some of the challenges, maybe not in every situation, but in some situations that might be the answer, is finding that middle ground with our students. Um, but I think that's important that we, we, we consult the students and find out what they want to do instead of trying to guess how, um, guess what they need and, and what they like. So, but thank you very much for the question. 
Well, thank you very much, Mark. So it is true that reading motivation is a universal problem, right? That, uh, and I do also agree to say that um, engaging the content is a very decisive uh, effort that the, that the teachers have to make in improving the students' reading skill. So thank you very much, Mark. Uh, we do apologize that because of um, time issue, we have to end this session, Mark. So okay. yeah, so uh, it is very nice having you here with us, listening and uh, watching your performance about how to improve the students' critical reading. We cannot wait to see you other teleconference, perhaps. Okay, yeah. So Mark, do you I have something to, to say more? Yeah. It's great to see so many familiar faces and so many new faces. So thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, so please everyone say thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all conference. I give it back to the uh, to the MC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pa Sukma Septian, for being honored to be the uh, moderator. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, we arrive to the end of the session of this today's public lecture. So let's close our agenda by saying Hamdalah. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. We hope this anticipated event will be beneficial for all of us. And then thank you for cooperation and attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Untuk mahasiswa boleh silahkan keluar dari lantai 10 di pintu belakang. Ya, biarlah